I think still the slide is visible. Yes, sir. Okay, so in the case of transmitter, uh, the voltage uh, is usually the input coming from a signal generator or an exciter, and then the electrical uh, equivalent of the piezoelectric crystal is uh, here is a capacitance. Though in real case there will be a parallel resistance here, it could be, but generally. Uh, say crystal oscillators are very pure so that resistance uh, part is negligible so uh, then the other part here is that uh, this is now uh, this will excite the mechanical uh, uh, mechanic mechanical output so that mechanical output uh, is uh, here that mechanical output is coming as a force so this force is shown as f here now that is essentially generated by this input voltage through that piezoelectric coefficient d k and v and uh, this one uh, is because actually k is coming because f is equal to k x so that way k is coming Now, uh, here also uh, the mechanical uh, model is done simply by damping and uh, spring constant and the mass M. So now we can uh, write these two equations. So one is, uh, of course, the transmitter part is given. That is, uh, though we have uh, that we have written earlier. So that is uh, the current I, the current source uh, I is equal to dQ dt is equal to d k k x dot and the other one is the force F is d k v. So these are the Two relations that is transferred from the mechanical part to electrical part and the electrical part to mechanical part so the current source this has been transferred from the mechanical part to the electrical part and this one is from the mechanical part to the uh, electrical part to the mechanical part in case of transmitter now Electrical impedance that we have JES Delta V S Delta I S because we have assumed as pure capacitor so that is simply 1 by cs and mechanical impedance z m s equal to delta f s by delta x dot x that is m s plus lambda 
plus k by s. Now, apart from this, if we want to include the effect of If we want to include the effect of uh, the source that is in case of the voltage excitation that is the signal generator that will have its internal impedance usually that is written on the probe and most of the signal generator has 50 ohm impedance but that 50 ohm uh, uh, depends on the frequency so that uh, if we also include it then the circuit will be modified as the equivalent circuit are modified with these two impedances they come in series so this is an excitation and then we have z e and the electrical equivalent of the piezoelectric crystal. So this is uh, some V sin omega t. And on the other side, we have just like before, the analogous resistance, inductance and capacitance corresponding to mass, spring constant, and damping. So on this side, we have the mechanical impedance. And here is the force. So in the other equivalent circuit, this side was open. So force was applied like uh, to this mechanical side without any uh, mechanical impedance consideration. So here it is uh, ZM into coming into picture. ZM, it could be because here this ZM comes into picture because uh, depending on the interface medium that is the sound energy is getting transmitted. So this is external medium. So for that purpose, there will be, maybe we can put a block here. This site is, they are electromechanically coupled and inside the same material. And this is of course the signal generator.
So in this case, we will have delta i if this is uh, this is i this one is x dot delta i s delta v s One by Z G plus one by C S. And Delta P S that is across this crystal that is equal to 1 by cs delta x dot by delta v s is equal to dk by ms plus lambda plus 1 by k s i think uh, here the source will be there the source uh, DKP. So that way, delta x dot by delta V s is DK by ms plus lambda plus one by k s. Now here some extra term will come plus j m. Then delta x delta x dot is That is nothing but differentiation of delta x is delta x s. So from this, if we replace various terms, we will get delta s s by delta v s. dk by s into ms plus lambda plus 1 by k s plus j m s 
into 1 by Cs. divided by from these two terms it is coming 1 by cs divided by zg plus 1 by cs Similarly, for the other part, we have Excuse me, sir, uh, I might have missed me because but what is ZG, sir? ZG is the internal ZG is the internal impedance Okay, I have written uh, what is the ZG? ZE I have written, I think. Okay, in the circuit, should it be ZG? Yeah, I have written, I think ZE, isn't it? Let yes. me see. Yes, ZES, sorry, sorry. ZES. According to their either either way we can change. Maybe we can change there or here. Maybe we can change here. That is ZG. Okay. Signal generator impedance. Input impedance or the output impedance, sorry, not input impedance, output impedance of the signal generator. Usually that is 50 ohms. but it may vary depending on the load and type of the load and the frequency so that is zc i think uh, yeah. so let us now uh, the next one would be the receiver part so for the receiver part we have Again, a sinusoidal mechanical oscillation. Which is being received. And this one is ZM. If it is purely resistive, it would be simply ZM, but many cases uh, it may not be purely resistive. So we have X dot here and the mechanical system equivalents. So we have lambda 1 by k, the capacitor, and the inductance of equivalent mass m. So on the other side we have dq dt, that is i, as a current source so this is dk x dot And if we have some measurement circuit with a load impedance ZL. So 
So these two parts are coupled. The representation of the piezoelectric crystal. The other side is the interface. So this is the mechanical interface. And this side is the electrical interface. So then uh, just like before, we can have delta x dot s by delta f. So this is f. One by MS plus Lambda plus one by K by S plus JMS. Then we have delta V. Delta V is here. V is here. Delta V is. 1 by Cs into JL divided by 1 by Cs plus JL into DK. Delta X dot S. Then Delta V S by Delta S X D K into J del by one plus J del C S. Delta V out, or we can simply tell as per our diagram, delta V S by delta F S. Now, this can be interpreted as the excitations or the outputs depending on the situation. DK by MS plus Lambda plus K by S plus JTM into JTL by 1 plus JTL CS. So this way you can model in, in, in the laboratory also that uh, experiment using these equations you can model the piezoelectric transmitter and receiver and check your outputs. Hello sir. Yes. Sir, the K in the numerator is the stiffness coefficient of the string constant. I mean, the string constant or the coupling factor. This is stiffness coefficient. Okay. Sir, and yes. sir, in the previous case, we were doing one by K S, and in 
This case, sir, K by S by sir. Which one? K by S. Yes, sir. And in the other case, we wrote one by K S. I mean, uh, in the transmitter block. Transmitter block. I have written one by K S. Oh, I think I have again done mistake. That is K by S. One by yes, K by S. Yeah, please correct it. This is K by S. And sir, could you please once explore why are we considering this one as receiver and the other one as transmitter? Basically, the system is same. Even device can be same. So that means same piezoelectric crystal with. Oh my God, what is happening? It is getting wrapped up. I don't know. Okay, so basically the device device is same. When we call transmitter, in case of transmitter, the input is an electrical input, and mechanical vibration is the or sound is the output. So in that case, that becomes a transmitter, and in case of receiver, the input is a sound or mechanical vibration is the input. Okay, that is X dot is the input and that we are interpreting as F force. Okay, because F can be related X to X dot. There are oscillations in the medium, mechanical oscillations. Those mechanical oscillations can carry certain force. So that force is a generating force here in case of receiver that is the generator so these are the mechanical uh, or sound is coming from here this is sound sound as the input and uh, sound or ultrasound and then those vibrations will create some force because all vibration is associated with force for uh, if the for finite mass so therefore, that is this generating force. So basically, the sound is coming as an uh, as an oscillation of the mechanical medium or the vibration, and then, or it can, could be through static force as well. So that means uh, we are giving a push to the crystal by. Uh, pushing or pulling the crystal if the one side is hinged. So then that is the generating force here. Now that generating force uh, will have some impedance associated with it. So that is uh, that is because because uh, of this external medium and the crystal medium are not same. So external medium has certain impedance and then the crystal is here, which is a second order system having a damping coefficient and a stiffness coefficient and mass. Okay, so that is the oscillator. So this is the crystal oscillator. Now this crystal oscillator uh, uh, will create an equivalent uh, uh, will create a displacement of charge. Now, if it is vibration, so there will be some uh, rate of change of charge and the corresponding current I uh, dq dt will be uh, created. So that is the current source. Now that I is related through this dk x dot. Okay. So we have seen that if we give a force 
then we have Q that is equal to D into F. Okay, where D is the piezoelectric coefficient. So now, uh, however, uh, we are making a derivative. So to transfer it from that charge to a current source. So therefore, it will, the current source is become D K X dot. Okay. The force will give a displacement. However, if we uh, if we have a uh, if we have a rate of change of uh, charge, if we de take the derivative of Q dQ dt to make it a equivalent current source, we are taking uh, from the mechanical side also dx dt. Okay, and if is if if it is static force then this becomes k into x if it is a dynamic condition where we are making dq dt and converting uh, to an equivalent current source then we are making it d into k x dot okay and that rest is the uh, electrical side we have a capacitance and the other side, uh, this could be a voltmeter or a cable, whatever, all those things that we have discussed for the piezoelectric sensors. Is it all right? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So, uh, now from the transmitter system transfer function, therefore we can write by simplifying this one further with uh, taking those uh, impedances like external interface impedances to be zero, simplifying the responses with Z. E. I have made it ZD or ZG, ZG, ZDG equal to zero and Jm equal to zero. So if we take the ideal case, then the transmitter transfer function Delta is just S by delta V S D by one by Omega N square S square plus two zeta omega N S plus one. So that can be identified as the second order ideal transfer functions that we have discussed initially with taking these impedances at zero. Similarly for the receiver, delta B S by delta F S that initially we have written while discussing the piezoelectric sensors D by C that is the static sensitivity and 
the, the dynamic part is coming tau s by 1 plus tau s into 1 by omega n square a square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus 1. So this d by c is the static sensitivity. So now we can uh, interpret this thing in terms of a crystal oscillator as well in case of both uh, transmitter and uh, receiver. So generally what happens, the oscillators are nothing but some kind of resonating circuit. So our next topic would be crystal oscill oscillators and resonators. Sir, can you scroll up a bit? Yes. Thank you. Sir, here you have written transmitter transfer function as delta x dot by delta x, delta v. But earlier the transmitter transfer function was delta x by delta v. So, what is the correct one? No, no, both are correct. Here the, the transfer function is different. No. Oh, okay, okay. No, but here that like that here you use delta x dot, and that the, at that place you had used delta x, just delta x. Oh, okay. Uh... Let me see if this one is delta x or delta s. All right. Delta x. Yes, sir, this one. Here I have written delta x dot. I said this one is delta x. Okay. I think uh, delta x dot y delta v s is d k by m s plus this one and i am making z m s equal to zero so m s square i think i have put a square i think there i think one that extra s term won't be there in case of delta s Oh, this is a square. Then this is, sorry, again, this is delta x. Thank you. So this is delta x only. And if it is delta x dot, then actually here there won't be one. It will be divided by s. So it will be like that. This will be 1 by s and this will be 2 zeta by omega n, then this will be 1 by omega n square s. So delta x and delta x dot is simply related by s. Now, uh, instead of the signal generator, often these are uh, the transmitters are excited by oscillators inbuilt with the transmitter. So, uh, so therefore, uh, the next topic would be like crystal oscillator and resonator. So, in case uh, of crystal oscillators and resonator with transmitter receiver, the advantage that I was telling is that. Uh, 
of higher sensitivity because at at omega n that is the resonating frequency its responses will be very good or responses will be very high so therefore efficiency of both transmitting and receiving uh, will be better so open this uh, operation of the device at resonant frequency omega n efficiency of both transmission and reception will be better so as we have discussed that the equivalent circuit electrical circuit of a crystal in case of an oscillator we can model is given by a resonator so the mechanical side is represented by inductance capacitance and the resistance r1 c1 l1 and uh, of course we have a another capacitance here the electrical impedance that is z es can be written by 1 by dk square ms plus lambda plus k by s equivalent equivalently jds equivalently jds equal to l1 
is plus R1 plus 1 by C1S. So where L1 would be M by DK square R1 would be lambda by dk square and C1 is d square k. So now uh, the overall transfer function Hs would be combination of this capacitance and this one. So HS or one by HS one by HS equal to simply the two will be added. Two admittances so that is uh, CS plus one by R one plus L one S plus one by C one S. Okay, now sinusoidal response can be evaluated on the imaginary axis. Hg omega is equal to reciprocal of this and replacing S by J omega. Okay, I think uh, somebody is rubbing it off or what? Anyway, so this is the sinusoidal response that uh, we shall discuss. Uh, so the series resonant frequency then would be. One by L1 C1. natural frequency
So we shall discuss a little bit about uh, this crystal oscillator and uh, some of its characteristics uh, tomorrow. Okay. Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, you still haven't added me in the theory class, sir. Huh? You still have, haven't added me in the theory class, sir. Okay, just one minute. 